This is exactly right. I'm Babs Gray, and when I'm a zombie, I'm not going to eat brains. I'm going to eat ass. <laughs> uh, I'm Brandy Posey, and uh, I took a quiz, and turns out I am a robot. <laughs> I'm Tess Barker, and I just want to do drugs with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Lady to Lady. Can you keep a cigarette? Neither can we. Hello! We got Barbara Brandy and of course Big Tess. We got a show for everyone that's the fucking best. Come on, baby. It's time to hang out with your favorite ladies. Ladies and ladies. Ladies and ladies. Welcome to the show, Zombies, Robots, and Drugs. That's that's about we're right. right. <laughs> we're very on brand today. It feels good. <laughs> um, I'm really excited about our guest. She's super funny. You can check out her podcast, The Bituation Room. She's also the host of News Broke on YouTube. Francesca Fiorentini, hello. Hi. Thanks for joining us today. No problem. Zombie, <laughs> robot, Drug. Drugs. Yes. <laughs> Zombie robot. Well, drug. you know, I said that, and then one of my friends was like, oh, we could do shrooms on Zoom. I'm like, that sounds like literal help. That's, that's like, not a pun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zoom shrooms. That, that does feel like a bad idea. Come to my Zoom shroom room. Yeah. 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 I got I got advertised a thing on Instagram the other day um, from, like a, like, a company that, like, is trying to like medicalize them completely and they're like we have special rooms you can come in we monitor you the entire time wouldn't it be weird to have like a strange doctor just like checking in on you throughout a thing like probably but i've done a decent number of interviews with people that work on um that work with like psychotropic drugs within like a clinical setting and most of those people are pretty aware of like what you want around mentally so most of the people i've talked to put like a decent amount of like thought into like setting and Okay. Making, yeah. Yeah. I one of my favorite, you know, sort of OG YouTube clips that I have saved is a, um, I think it's from like the early 2000s and it's this news report and it's like turns out the hippies of the 60s were up to something and like a new Johns Hopkins <laughs> study on psilocybin and it's just these sort of like, you know, middle America folks who were exactly brandy. Like yeah. I was like, why would you want to trip in this like white walled like awful yeah. hospital like setting but there's yeah. this this quote this woman she's like um i felt like my heart was <laughs> ripped open in two and then we were all one <laughs> oh fuck yes that was so good i was like yes even in that setting yeah psilocybin is amazing she still figured. It I'm out. gonna imagine that oh, yeah. now that when I see any like street side news interview, I'm gonna imagine that's what the person. My heart was ripped into you, <laughs> and, and then we were all we were all. I wish I could just administer to every Karen. Like she was a reformed Karen. Yeah. Straight up. Oh yeah. No, Karens need a Molly. A Molly trip. Truly, oh, I think God. in For the sure. same way that like there have been studies that instead of disciplining kids, it's much more effective just to have them meditate for like five minutes. Mm-hmm. Same thing maybe with the Karens. Maybe we, you need to have a mandatory uh, shroom trip. Although I did, <laughs> I there was a weird. Mo- an old movie that I like stumbled upon where this like surfer became president and he made everyone in the country take LSD. Yeah, and dude. Then- <laughs> what a specific then- kind of fascism. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It was, but they were literally making camps and sending old like boomers into camps who didn't want to take and forcing them to drink like LSD water. It was, what it's is- very intense. What is this movie? That's what I'm saying. Oh That's what we God. need to think Antifa is, movie. okay? That's- we gotta be careful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did he wow. give some sort of really presidential, you know, like um, mm-hmm. it's four chill, tabs yeah. and seven? <laughs> I don't know. Rips ago, do yeah, seven rips ago. <laughs> four tabs and seven dabs. <laughs> I'd like to say everyone looks great. We're filming this. We just started filming, and so yeah. I was like, oh, I'm putting on makeup to do a podcast for the first time. Mm-hmm. I mean, ever. This might be. Yeah, it's very exciting. Uh, I'm wearing my new computer glasses because I'm trying not to go blind with the blue light. Woo! They're so cute, Brandy. They're Thank adorable. you. Thank you. They're my light. I was like, what's a pair of glasses that'll make me feel like I'm getting down to business? Um, <laughs> it feels yeah, you're like about to do someone's time. taxes. Yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. But That's like what I was in going a for. cute way. 
<laughs> oh my god, let's save you some I money. I mean, if we're gonna do it, we have to be cute. <laughs> yeah, okay? exactly. I love QuickBooks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have. I don't know if I want to admit this story on this feed, but oh, I'm going well. to. Okay. Uh, it's Exciting. not like that crazy, but it's just embarrassing enough. Slash, the person who I'm talking about could find out about it, but it's so not this that. whole podcast, anyway. everything we always do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. Great. So, okay, okay. <laughs> the reason we live it's in not, dread and wake up in sweat, sweating. It was at night. just perfect. a Great. moment that makes you be like, okay, core, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, here it is. Um, they also probably hearing me shout this from my bedroom. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but my my <laughs> I was like downstairs doing the dishes, mm-hmm. and. I farted. Mm-hmm. Sorry, yeah, everybody. Same. You're a body. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's natural. Yeah. What kind of fart my mom says? Yeah. I don't know. It was a mysterious. It had been happening. I was like, I don't know where this is coming from, but okay. Okay. So mystery fart happens, and then um, I hear my roommate coming down the stairs, and I was like, oh, that's bad timing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he just he walks in the kitchen. He goes, ooh, it smells like pasta. <laughs> <laughs> And like, you said, <laughs> I was like, it's, I said it's pizza. I was cooking pizza. So maybe that's what he was oh, smelling. Oh, okay. If you were cooking oh. pizza, that's what he was smelling. But it was literally that moment. That's like, so I'm funny. Like, I'm not kidding. We're like, yeah, it's that's actually, it's a moment. spicy meatball is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, just a little quarantine content for you guys. And you just so chuckled all... sort of maniacally to yourself, like, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, yeah, of course. <laughs> they definitely didn't have a bite of the pizza. Or like this is poison. <laughs> it's come to that in quarantine. I'm going to die. <laughs> how's your How's your quarantine going now that we're in like you know the extended? Yeah. Oh yeah. 2. The extra. 0. The yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The bonus. Are you content. in California, Francesca? Bonus content. I am. I'm in LA. Okay. Um, I decided to. My boyfriend and I are moving in together. So. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Which is like the worst idea because moving in this time feels awful, but also like if we have to be in our homes Mm -hmm. for the next six months to a year, whenever, you know, seven years, might as well be in a home (laughs) you're really comfortable in and you like and like pool resources, et cetera. We're never going to see anyone. I'll probably have, you know, five babies yeah. In five months, whatever it is. Like, everyone's <laughs> yeah. getting married. This is very weird. It's just like, well, let's yeah. just get married. You know, there's a lot of that happening, too. Yeah. But I did drive up the coast and go over to the Monterey area, and it's just gorgeous. Like, mm-hmm. I, it's, I just, it's funny because I wouldn't recommend it because I'm sure people on are listening in Florida, and I'm like, yeah. N- stay in your home. Mm-hmm. Do not leave your home if you're no. in Florida right now. Yeah, or yeah. Texas. You stay there. Or even yeah. California, or really, California. but like... Yeah. W- most everyone you see is wearing masks, etc. Mm-hmm. But I will say I'm quarantined up at um in Ventura County and there's a huge uh anti LA sentiment here. It's very common to see chalk that says LA go home. People will write LA go home and like the dust on their cars. Like people know that what? people from out El- Yeah, because everyone from wow. LA is coming up to the beaches here. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. In the in the dust on their cars. Oh, I like that's that. comforting. Yeah, <laughs> wash me and go home. Fucking guilty. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like I get a pass because I'm from here, but yeah. Just to Shout report outs. back to you guys. Yeah, I mean, I think I think like uh, people obviously need to get out and like no, you know, not be stuck inside all day. So obviously, there's safe ways to do it, and I, I'm glad people are like doing it. Yeah. But it is, I mean, yeah, we're like, we're inside, baby. <laughs> this is, <laughs> we're like barely going anywhere. We don't go inside anywhere. I know. It's just, why are we like getting translucent? <laughs> uh, well, I just got really burned, yeah. too. So um, it looks good, though. It does. You can pull off translucent, <laughs> I think, better than others. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I've always been transparent, so it's good to know my skin is finally matching with Hello. the rest of me. But it's but you know, but in terms of Ventura County, that's north of of LA, and that's the only place we can go because you go south and no one is wearing a mask. No, like, I know that. I know that. I am sympathetic. I'm an Angelino. I get. I'm just reporting back to you guys. Yeah, the 805 <laughs> is against us. <laughs> no, but like low key. I mean, now I'm broadcasting it on a podcast, but it's, uh, it's yeah. not a bad place to visit. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. Yeah, I, mean, I just I Googled and I was like, ooh. Mm-hmm. So you're moving in. Are you moving into a mutual place or a new place? 
a new place, new place, new place. Okay. So nice. pooling the resources, going for something bigger. Nice. Uh, there's going to be like a whole podcast area, you know, because yeah. like we make the big money doing <laughs> podcasts. I thought you were yeah. going to say there's going to be a whole podcast about it. Like you're just starting a podcast about no. moving. No. <laughs> I'm very resistant. He'll come on on the Bituation Room, but I'm also very resistant again to be one of those podcasty couples. Which, like, there's some good couples podcasts out there. I'm just like, yeah. you know, there, um, there, w- there was like an inclination at the beginning of this for uh, some couples to be like, all right, and how do we pivot to content immediately? <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, good. Well, good I mean, for you. I feel like it would just be funny because we'll we'll have conversations occasionally that we're like, oh, this is funny. We should talk about it on the mm-hmm. podcast. But it'd be so funny to do that with your partner who you're living with, being like, I'm not going to talk to you for the rest. Of the yeah. day. <laughs> Save it for the pod. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, I think a lot of that stuff also started like, okay, this is going to be like three weeks. It'll be like a three week web web series. This will be weird but fun, oh. whatever. And now we're on day 135, 40, and it's like, oh no, oh no, we gotta. Fuck. I, I hope know, you guys were ready to commit to that podcast for the long haul, guys. We want we want to hear your separation. We yeah, want to hear exactly get that couple counselor on the air. Let's do. This. I will say, you know, I'm proud of comedians because they are all having children slash getting pregnant right now, and that just shows you how stupid we are. <laughs> <laughs> just willing to be like no i can do this yeah. more than anyone else so what's the cutoff date like what point because i know a lot of people who have had babies or well into their pregnancies mm-hmm. got pregnant around february march mm-hmm. right. when does the <laughs> right. judgment start is it like i'm saying like april if you trying to conceive in april wow <laughs> i just think it's like you're a dreamer and that's good for you it's a level of optimism <laughs> i'll never unlock within myself <laughs> Um, it's just not who I am in my bones. <laughs> so, <laughs> Congrats. Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud. I'm very proud. It's just we're different people. That's good. I mean, I don't know. I'm going to be contrarian. I don't know that comedians are any worse parents than anyone else. I mean, like, at oh, least I'm not saying they're worse parents. parents. I'm saying yeah. deciding to have a kid right now. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying bad parents. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just meant the, like, fuck it. Let's do this. Have that baby. <laughs> sure. That's what I mean. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm like, honestly. Yeah. The raw, I'm just like, like, it actually, like but, what it took for us to get up on open mics and think that it would, like, yeah. do anything. Right. That's Work what out. I mean. Right. I mean, I almost wonder if it's coming from, like, I don't know if the people that are trying to conceive, I wonder if they're just getting so bored that they're like, I need someone else to talk to. I need to invite a friend over, so I'm going to make That's one. That's exactly that what is it is. True. You have to yeah. birth your own friend. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes sense. And, yeah. I mean, great great podcast partner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, exactly. Just start it. Oh, man. Or, it's, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. Long con. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone's building skills. What if you have a baby? Start building skills from a really, really young age. They know how to yeah. sing, play piano, dance, do all your, your, your mm-hmm. entire routine. Um swim I don't know like and then you just sort of build this like super baby that is going to be a uh, movie star a pop star soccer player you know basketball star whatever it is like they you've created this little human because really when sometimes when comedians have kids they're like well putting my eggs in this basket you know like you're yeah. gonna be the star yeah I think I'm that's always worked it. out really well for the person who totally is. yeah so healthy so. yeah they don't burn out uh or just stop speaking to their family completely oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh come on Sandra Bullock Leonardo DiCaprio uh, did Sandra and- Bullock did that who's Sandra Bullock's parents no but what is she what yeah. Oh, the Bullocks. Oh, my yeah. God. All right. Of course. Yeah. By Miss the way, Randy, Bullock. Randy and Mandy. Yeah, Randy and Mandy Bullock. <laughs> I Randy love Bullock Sandra Bullock. I think it's her birthday today, honestly. And I saw that. <laughs> and it was like, I this morning, that was like, we were having kind of a stressful morning when I saw Sandra Bullock's birthday. And I'm like, I fucking love Sandra Bullock. Good for you, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> she's just a great movie star. I mean, she's, she's fun. funny. She's got drama. She's beautiful. Down yeah. to earth. I'm a fan. I'm not. I'm not a. Mm, she's on the Julia Roberts spectrum for me, which is my not like mm. spectrum. Unfortunately, you don't like Julia Roberts. No. Okay, kinda, let's get into it. What? I can kind of <laughs> take or leave Julia Roberts too. Honestly. Oh my god, you guys. Wait, can we say that Brandy also thought that Julia Roberts was in that GIF of the woman not understanding math? So Wait, is that I don't know? I, Julia I still. I, I thought that was from one like conspiracy theory or something. It felt like it was from a movie with her. I don't know who it is, but it's not okay. her. But you got the movie right. That is a movie she was in. Yeah. Yeah. With, yeah. yeah. Oh, exactly. she's like a teacher at a girls' school or something. Is that what you're thinking of? 
I don't. I, I just that's like a movie with uh, Mel, Mel Gibson, I think. Uh, Oof. I think I think that's like an old nineties movie. By the way, he, he low key had COVID, and none of us got to celebrate that. True. Oh, wow, bummer. I didn't even. Yeah, I it's didn't unclear what the, the right way to celebrate COVID for you know pieces <laughs> of shit is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like I think we should all. You can't do it publicly, you know, because like we're on a podcast now. Someone might listen. You know what I mean? You can't mm-hmm. do it on Twitter. You can't really do it on Facebook. Yes. There's always going to be someone. You have to just like go into a closet and like the mm-hmm. where you also dance to Britney Spears or whatever. And just like, yes, I know I have just one black candle of a skull that I light and I'm like, hell yeah. And, <laughs> and I watch it burn for a minute and then I put it out <laughs> until the next time. <laughs> Just yeah, I think I just go on ignoring him or anything he does. Yeah, yeah. That's my yeah. celebration. That's <laughs> true, fair. true, true. That's but, quite healthy. But Julia Roberts. Uh, yeah, why don't, what's the beef? What's the beef? Um, she just, she's very annoying. I'm sorry. She's just yeah. an incredibly annoying person uh, and a celebrity. But I will say my best friend's <laughs> wedding, she sealed it with my best friend's wedding as being the most annoying. My bad. I, Awful. Yeah. The whole premise no, is... No, wait, are you oh talking about the character? No. You're talking about characters, though. Well, yeah, no, I know, but she I felt like it was too close to home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then she kind of redeemed herself with Aaron Brockovich was good. Yeah. That's fine, and whatever. Like, I don't... And then, I, Sandra, here's the thing about Sandra Bullock that was really annoying to me. Like, I think she's funny. I think she's a great comedic actress, actually, and she could... Whatever, she's good. Mm-hmm. Gravity and her, like... Now I've got all the work done and I redid my entire face and now I'm on the cover to Van- Vanity Fair. And yeah, she didn't have say over the title, of course, but the title of the article was Why Sandra Bullock is More Bankable and More Beautiful Than Ever. And it's just like, yeah, because she got a new fucking face. You know, and it's just like, I don't know. I'm like, I feel like Gravity was just a close up of like, Look at Zephila, you know, like over here and over here. And it, gravity was a close up of her fixing gravity in real life. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Defying gravity. Yeah. Okay, Defy. but I will ask you this, Francesca. It's what all comes petty. First, None of this makes the, any sense. The headlines or the fillers? Okay, it's a chicken or egg situation. Because. <laughs> right, right. It's yeah. a trap. Oh, my, I mean, it's awful. Like, you're not allowed to age as Sandra Bullock, even though she is beautiful and she would age yes, beautifully. Gorgeous. Mm-hmm. You're just not allowed to. Um, but I think ScarJo mm-hmm. is more, for me, despisable oh. than both. Okay, thank yeah. God. I thought you were yeah, going to yeah, say yeah. you like ScarJo better. I was like, oh, no. Oh, ScarJo no. okay. is like, okay. yeah, Sandra, Julia, that's fine. Yeah. ScarJo. Okay. Yeah. I'm no, kind of just... getting, I sense what you're saying. Like, there's a little je ne sais quoi about mm-hmm. Sandra and Julia. Like, you can't really put, it's just kind of, is it their smile? Something like that? Well, it. Isn't yeah. America's isn't America's sweethearts about Julia Roberts and like what a shit she is? She's the actress in it. Yeah, but isn't it like about? No, is she her saying story? it was written about her? Oh, I have no idea. I don't know. Yeah, that's like it's. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna look it up because that, that's like a some. It's like about somebody's sister. Is that a new movie? No, it's yeah. with Catherine Zeta Jones, and Catherine Zeta Jones, I think, is the famous person. And Julia Roberts is like the homely younger sister, which is yeah. I like. I love. I love. Which this is industry. hilarious. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the overwhelming mediocrity of both of them, and I'm sorry, but it <laughs> is. Like, it is... Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't feel that way about J-Law. I don't feel that way about mm-hmm. um, other beautiful uh, Ameri- I don't feel that way about Jennifer Aniston. Mm-hmm. Two people you could put in that same category, but I don't because I don't think they're mediocre. But listen, there are mediocre men in Hollywood all over the goddamn place, so who am I... <laughs> Mm-hmm. To say that these people, you know, phone it in, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we should have, <laughs> they've earned the right to phone it in. Yes, mm-hmm. of course. I I mean, I don't really think about them that much, but I enjoy them both. Like, I'm, I'm just, they're there. They're in some classics. Yeah. You know. I mean, I'm not a huge rom-com person, in ge- like, f- in general, so I'm always like, eh. Come on, Speed. Mm-hmm. Sandra's in Speed's a lot fun. of non-rom-coms. Yeah, yeah. The number I like one Sandra rom-com quite a bit more. of the 90s. Yeah. Speed. <laughs> the Pelican Speed. Brief, um, great rom-com. The other Speed. Uh, <laughs> oh, Crystal Meth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do we think about fillers, everyone? Are we going to do them? Yes. I'm, I'm ready. Yes. No. <laughs> yes. No, I want to watch. I want to watch what this face does. I was talking to my best friend about this recently, and she goes, "Look, there's two options. 
You either look old or you look crazy, and I'm going to look crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny and very That's true. Funny. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm excited to see what my face turns into. I mean, you know, whatever. I am too, but then I'm also excited to play with it, like yeah. the Play-Doh set. Have you guys done Botox before? Yes. Mm-mm. Love it. No. I did it once, and uh, let me just say... Don't buy Botox off of Groupon, y'all. Like, <laughs> no, not so much. It's not worth it. The lesson of the day. The lesson. And that's absolutely where I would also do it. Right, of course. And I was peer pressured into it by a friend mm-hmm. uh, who was like convincing me that, you know, it'd be worth it and why not? Because I have quite a lot of lines on my forehead when I, you know, talk and yeah. I'm a human. So, mm-hmm. so I got like, and this is, I'm sure, Tess, you know, too many, but 20 units straight up into the in the forehead piece um and you know we're comics so like it's it's not easy to totally. you need that you need that. you That's need part, it's part of the face. some eyebrows the eyebrows and, frame uh, the face <laughs> anyway it was a ye- a solid year of not being able to move my forehead i was Ooh, so mad shit. and i looked very jack nicholson because the only thing because like when you get botox you you start to get like Jack Nicholson eyebrows, your eyebrows go up, but that's oh. it. And so you're just like, here's Franny. You know, like, that's what I was <laughs> <laughs> But I know that more measured Botox, more strategic can be, uh, can be good, even though it is still poison you're injecting into your face. It is. Was that it? Was that it for you then? Or are you not going to do it again? Yeah. I think, I mean, who knows? I might go back on that, but that was four years, three years ago. And I think that's, that was it. That was the last time. Um, yeah, yeah, I had, cause it takes like a week to kick in. And, uh, last time I got it, I was on stage and I hadn't kicked in yet. And I went to go face tag one of my jokes and it, that like, that's when I, I was like, it, it was like trying to, it was like, it was like trying to walk on ice and roller skates. I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean face tag? Just like with a look like yeah, little, I do a lot like of like, a certain tag, expression. like a lot of like, I end a lot of jokes yeah. with just like an, ex- you know, like sure my face. Uh, and you know, a third of my face was, uh, was taking a break. <laughs> Taking a break. <laughs> Speaking of, we have to take a break right now. Okay. Airbnb. We'll be back in a second, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome back to Lady to Lady. I'm Brandy. I'm Babs. I'm Tess. And we're here with Francesca. Hey. Um, you guys, yeah. I have to show you what I just got, and you're going to be so excited. What? Oh, my God. Do you see that? Oh, lip smacker. Dr. Pepper oh lip smacker. My God. Whoa. Where, from eBay? Where'd you find Target. that? Target. Target has this shit right now. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that was in the wild again. Yeah, it's in the wild. And I actually think it's like a legitimately cool lip color. Like, it's just like a little something. It's a little tint. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just a little red tint. It's yeah. a little something. Mm-hmm. Bringing us back. <laughs> love that I love that remember the remember that craze oh first it was like mm. for me it was like bubble bubble gum was really like bubblicious or like bubble mm-hmm. yum and like what flavors do you have and then that became lip smackers it's basically yes. the same thing I pretty much ate the lip smacker <laughs> totally yeah. I would just sit there and put I mean I think it got out like pogs and lip smackers got out loud at my school at the same time because all the girls would just sit there in class like <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> lip smackers oh man <laughs> Man. Don't you feel like twelve-year-olds now are like these fucking these, like? Do you think they're doing pogs or eleven-year-olds? No, they're all just I like think, doing Molly. No, and stuff. they're just doing like exactly. TikTok and yeah, yeah they're TikTok and they're full full contoured faces. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I I legitimately don't think I wore makeup until like dances in high school, and then only for dances in high school. I like didn't didn't What's own. Freedom? I don't think I owned like and like maybe lipstick, but like any eye stuff until. I'd love College, to get a look literally. at my the makeup I attempted in high school. Yeah. <laughs> it was real rough. <laughs> no one yeah, taught us. No, I mean, we didn't have Lots tutorials. Of brown no. eyeshadow. I mean, I, I, I was a theater kid, so I, I learned to do makeup really young, but mm-hmm. I learned how to do stage makeup. Like, I never learned how to do street makeup, right. so I just took that pancake philosophy and went straight into eighth grade with it. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just like imagining, but you're you doing theater makeup like old person yes. makeup or like a fake scar or something. <laughs> just cats. Five o'clock cats shadow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I remember, I distinctly remember it'd be like free samples that I, my mom got, a purple, green mm-hmm. eyeshadow. So then I'd just be like, no, no mascara, no <laughs> eyeliner, just mm-hmm. green eyeshadow. Hello, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I remember my older cousin being like, whoa. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so mad. Yeah. Well, I remember in high school, and I think this is probably why I got turned off of it in high school. I remember in high school, my mom taking me to one of those, like, I guess it's one of those like Mary Kay things where you go to a lady's house and they tell you if you're a autumn or a summer or whatever yes. the fuck that is. Mm-hmm. Yes. And they just spack, spackle your face. Oh, yeah. And I remember being like, oh, I don't want to do this. So I just like didn't, because I, I thought you had to do all of it to, to wear makeup. So I just like was like, I don't, that seems like a lot to deal with. I'm not going to do it until I was like, what oh, about you tattoo just... eyeliner? Oh, um, would, would, would you do it? So I have a lot of, I'm Chinese and I have a lot of family members who are like, mm-hmm. I don't know why that's different, but for some reason it's a little more like normal. Mm-hmm. It, like I have a few family members who have it. My aunt has it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, my grandma has it. I mean, I think it's not a bad idea if you're doing it every fucking day. I agree. Like, yeah. Do we know anyone who do like young women do that? Because yes. we're like really young, you know. Well, I, mean, I, I know they do eyebrows. They do brows. But that's eyeliner, brows. I feel yeah. like yeah. yeah. Oh, tattoo. The yeah. Mi- yeah. microblading your brows. Yeah. Like if you have really thin ones, they'll just kind of fill it in with like little lines. But doesn't that go away? No, but I think tattooing long, long, happens. Long time. Yeah, you, oh, you, yeah, you, oh, okay. yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you tattoo them. It takes a long time for them to fade. Okay, okay. Yeah, I feel like because yeah, my I don't know when my grandma got it, but it's like yeah. if it's just like the thing you're getting up and doing every single day. I mean, it seems terrifying to have a tattoo needle that close to yeah. your eye, but I could see myself yeah. doing How that. How does she look? I'm... Is she hot? Yeah. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> hey, grandma. Fucking Ray. How do you think she got that? Her husband in an AOL chat room. It was that eyeliner, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I can see myself doing it when I'm older. Like, if, like, my vision starts... Like, if I, like, have to wear glasses to, like, really see my makeup, then I'd be oh, like, yeah. fuck it, just do it. Like, to a certain, a certain point, but... Honestly. I mean, it would look better than whatever the fuck I'm doing now. So, please, someone professional do this. <laughs> yeah. Because I still don't know how to do this shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I fuck it. Give me the whole... Tattoo a cat eye onto me. Like, who's kidding who? Yes, I just want to fucking wake up ready to go. You know? <laughs> but we don't know what the trend's going to be in 10 years. It, it, there That's will fine. come a time, I, sh- I swear to God, when eyebrows, I mean all eyebrows, will yeah. be out of style. You think so? Yes. You, yeah. you, we just shave them off and you putty them over. And that's yeah. going to be the thing. Because at that point, obviously, aliens will have revealed themselves. They're looking all hot and green mm-hmm. and whatevs. And so everyone's yeah. just going to try and look like them. Like, we don't know. We don't know. So, like, yeah. you're going to be sad if you have some sort of permanent thing. Here's the thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep mine regardless because I've always had thick eyebrows. And I had them through the 90s when everyone was going real thin because I kind of just wasn't paying attention. And I feel like I've been very vindicated in the last few years of just, like... <laughs> Same. Yeah. I've never done shit to mine. Yeah. And, and now I'm, I'm like, nice. well, I guess they're now they're trending. Yeah, but. exactly. I don't have to fill them in. I've never had to do shit with them. The it's aliens just, yeah. I'm waiting for the know. unibrow I mean, to come back in because I will grow mine in a week. <laughs> <laughs> It'll I be there I think will come you. back in. I can see that happening. Yeah, exactly. I believe. <laughs> that could be the aliens now, to come. Our, so I heard that aliens are real, but I didn't really pay attention. Does, it, does anyone, can anyone Did fill me in Did that happen this week? No, yeah. it's happened in the last, yeah. I mean, All right, what's it's the happened deal? The, recently, but I saw a friend who's into alien stuff sharing it, and I was like, I should read this article, and then I didn't, yeah. so. Well, that's why the, that's You why got the important stuff, now. though, I think. I feel informed. <laughs> well, because right now, here, honestly. They're queer, get used to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because honestly, if they were if they were like there's aliens, we'd all be like, yeah, sure, cool, of course, of course, there's aliens now. How about yeah. everything else? Like it's the best time to make that pronouncement real because we're all exactly. overloaded. That it's like, yeah, sure, also aliens. Are they nice? Okay, cool. Can they help? All right, whatever. Right. But Reagan the- Reagan was dead for half of his term. Okay, cool. Yeah, perfect. Great. Um, awesome. Fine. Replaced by a gray. That sounds awesome. Perfect. <laughs> a gray is a you kind know- of alien barber. Not you. <laughs> I know. I. <laughs> there. Um. The oh yeah, they are gray, not green, supposedly. Mm-hmm. Well, they call the them the grays, oh, right? Oh. There's different kinds. There's like the grays. There's the uh, the people like the what are the lizard ones called? Those are the green ones, but they're like more like carnivorous. They're the ones to be worried about. The people are fed to. Oh now, shit! Let me hold on. Let me take some notes here. Is, is, <laughs> is this based on anything or just some nerd's uh, book? Oh, uh, I mean, it's 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 based some nerds book. <laughs> That's real. Look, it's real. It's published. It's real. Yeah. Hey, it got published. It's in print. It's real. 
I mean, it's based off of, like, in the 50, all the different, like, sightings and stuff across different things. Yeah, it's, like, based yeah. on, like, what people yeah, have, have said, perceived to have seen. Yeah, perceived well, to have happened and whatnot. Because we were watching a documentary a couple nights ago about, like, deep sea creatures, mm-hmm. which yes. are obviously very alien-like. And I, yeah. I almost wonder, like, did we just subconsciously decide that's what aliens look like? Because that's, like, the closest thing we have to aliens? I mean... Or vice versa? Uh, I mean... It depends. I mean, I feel like in the 50s we didn't wait, know. What, wait, what's, what does vice versa mean in this case? Um, they look like aliens because they are aliens. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like the fish were like, oh, fuck, I want to look like that. <laughs> yeah. Can I get that face, please? <laughs> yeah. Just the fucking t- tilapia was like, yeah, like what if I was I on the bottom? I want to get plastic surgery to look like that guy. Yeah, what if I All have... the fish are just getting Botox, I think. Yeah, it's just a salmon that's like, what they're if I had a light bulb come yeah. out of my head? <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. The fish, I mean, their their lips look fake. I have to say, fish is... Fish's lips. Look yeah, fun. absolutely. <laughs> fish, you could take it down a notch, just, you know. <laughs> yeah, you're doing too much. Um, I feel there's... like you know about this. Brand uh, like. I mean, I listen, I listen to a lot of podcasts about it. Like, I'm a big Last Podcast and the Left fan, and they really get into, like, covering alien stories and stuff like that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, that are, like, you know, just kind of interesting to be like, oh, maybe. There's, like, there were just so many sightings in the 50s and everything like that that some of them, like, there's, like, weird groups of, like, 50 or 60 people in different places in different towns that will have seen the same thing on a night. And it's right. like, ah, oh, that's weird. Okay. So it's like, I don't know. I've always been kind of open to it. Um, but the, the new thing is now there's been a lot of, like videos were released by the navy that they were like we don't actually know what this is so it actually oh, so is are you talking about that story that resurfaces with the wobbly thing in the sky that i one? don't know i don't know that that has there's like kind few. of resurfaced recently yeah. there's new yeah. there, there's new stuff and, and i think when because the one that resurfaced recently also happened like a year ago they just recycled that story yeah, yeah, yeah that but they said basically what i what i know of it is that they said that the the program was never shut down like okay. yeah. they were supposed oh, okay. to shut down and they mm-hmm. never shut down. So it's like still operating under the like office of Naval something. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yes, uh, identifying uh, or researching um, unidentified happenings in the sky, sky mm-hmm. aerial phenomenon. And so that's still, it's a program that's still up and running. So we don't know if the Pentagon is going to release any more information, mm-hmm. but I mean, if look, it's still an election year. It'd be a great yeah. October surprise. Such oh, yeah. a good October <laughs> surprise. They're going to dump a lot of Biden emails. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. come down. Yeah. With a, bu- oh with God, a trove please. of emails. And yeah. uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> oh, I mean, man, October, Halloween's going to be really scary this year. <laughs> straight up scary. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. <laughs> man. Okay, let's do some of these. Okay beauty pageant questions wow we we were looking for something new to do so these are interesting mm-hmm. um have you not done these you know, before these are no, no you're mm-hmm. first oh, first man. uh guest so yeah for Don't our, for our probe up. if you will <laughs> yeah exactly these are uh okay some of these i cannot believe this is the first question i mean why am i of course of course these are stupid um i'm not even asked that one i don't like it what qual- what quality do you like most about yourself and why? What, this is a top 10 beauty pageant questions. What quality do you like most about yourself and why? Um, could you answer it honestly versus what your beauty pageant answer could be? Thank you. Mm. <laughs> oh, or you want us, me to answer or, honestly? Or yeah. let us or let us know which answer you would like to give. Are you trying to win or are you trying to be real? Oh, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Um, no, okay. Well, now I want to be real. Uh, I think I give good advice. I think I'm a good mm. advice giver. And uh, it's, uh, I'm very into, this is not a good personality trait, but I'm into like astrology Instagram. So I follow a lot of Virgo memes because uh, I am a Virgo. And supposedly we're super straight up and we like give good advice, but nobody wants to hear it. And people are like, you're mean. Yeah. And we're like, we're honest. And uh, so anyway, I think I give decent, I try not to like be shitty when I yeah. do give the advice, but I think I've got a pretty good read on situations and, um, Hell yeah. but like, that's a very good, the other quality trait, I yeah. like is like my heart. <laughs> <laughs> it's big. <laughs> I like my filler. <laughs> <laughs> it's yours. If you bought it, there you go. Um, uh, this is a sidebar. Do you guys, 
what, once you fill your lips, is there any going back or is it like Pandora's box? I don't I think no so. Idea. Oh, you mean, do they go down? Yeah, or can they go asking? back down to normal or is it? I think they do. They oh, they can go back down. Okay, oh, okay. cool. Yeah, so they deflate. Go... Okay. So it's like a temporary tattoo. <laughs> Tess <Yeah>. is like, <laughs> dude. <laughs> We're doing this. Exactly. Okay. It's like putting a little tiger on your shoulder. <laughs> For like yeah. a year. Okay. I think it's something like that. Yeah. Okay. Although I bet you you could probably overdo it and like fuck them up. And then like they would. Oh, well that happens. They would, you yeah, can. Initially you probably like you look ridiculous. But then they mm-hmm. like the swelling goes down. I've seen a lot of people when they first get it. Remember that weird thing where they were like doing the the can or whatever on their lips to make oh, them yeah, real Kylie big? lips. The Kylie lip thing, and that yeah. one girl like ripped her lip. To oh me. god, it was it's horrifying. basically like the uh, Swedish penis enlargement thing from Lost and Powers, but for your lips, yes. right? It's just like a power sucker <laughs> suction technology. Yeah. Okay, hey Francesca, what yes. is your definition of success? Oh my god, what is my definition of success? <laughs> mm-hmm. Is to be able to. <laughs> Look in the mirror every morning and no, I'm not a war criminal. <laughs> and if I can do that, you know, I'm winning. <laughs> that would be um, that would be too much for a beauty pageant answer. Oh, They'd be yeah. like, uh, what? But what about the Midwest? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. That's a tor- terrible answer. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, wh- oh, definitely. Dude, here's this is gonna again. I'm gonna be real and say definition of success is, God, this sounds is just to be happy. But really, I you know I think in this clawing, gnawing, um, you know, mm-hmm. uh, trying to excel and succeed and get the next thing and have more followers mm-hmm. and uh, more downloads and whatevers. Um, and in a time of uncertainty and especially in like the arts where there's mm-hmm. fucking no money and comedy clubs and venues are closing down and everyone's struggling. Mm -hmm. It makes everything really real. And for me, I'm just like, man, I think for me, if nothing else happens in my life in terms of like any opportunities or whatever, I just don't want to be resentful. Mm -hmm. And like, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a, it's another way of being saying like, just stay grateful, which I fucking hate. But I, but like, if you put it on the other foot and you're like, we all know people who are resentful, we Mm -hmm. know resentful people and they're miserable and we hate being around them. And I just, whatever I do in my life, I'm like, get to a point where you are not resentful about things you've done, the people you surround yourself with. And, uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah whatever the fuck that means. But then again, it's hard. I think you constantly have to be checking in with yourself about like how angry you are because this person got that thing and that person, you know, this mm-hmm. person, and you just compare mm-hmm. and compare and you're just like, ah, uh, so. It's yeah, a very, I think sometimes yeah. that can pass without you even being cognizant of it, especially mm-hmm. um, at the volume with which we consume information. And like, it's just like this rapid fire. Like your brain yeah. doesn't even have a chance to realize like what it's filing away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Until yeah. you give yourself a chance to kind of like slow down and, do whatever you can to like, yeah, be aware of that. That's a good, yeah, I like that. Yeah, also, I kind of feel like gratitude has become so trite that like, even though you are kind of saying the same thing, it's just like a good way of shifting around to something that actually sounds <laughs> yeah, just don't yeah. be a resentful dick. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's so hard because it is like, you know, I think about that. Obviously, it depends day to day how you feel about, your, you know, your station in life or whatever. Um, but uh, in many days I can be like, I'm so grateful for where I am, for what I've done, for what's going on right now. And just like, but at the end of the day, I know my like goal. And if I don't get there, I'm going to be really fucking sad. And it's yeah. like so hard for me to not mm-hmm. still like picture that and be like, but I really want that. Yeah, and yeah. I'm not going to obviously I'll survive if I don't get it, but yeah. fuck, I really want it. Yeah. You know? yeah so yeah. it's hard to like. I don't know. It's hard to get past that. Yeah. I think it's definitely like a conscious practice like every day. Cause you know, it's like gratitude's also been commercialized, which kind of takes it away from you as like an individual thing that you could deal with. Cause you know, it's like, no, 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 no. I, I, it's like still just like a personal thing to kind of just be checking in constantly and like finding new things that you're like, Ooh, I achieved, I achieved this. I'm happy here. Mm-hmm. Like, Oh, I, there are, are things that I, you know, I'm happy about that. I wouldn't even have like, wouldn't even have been on that lit on that like bucket list when I made it years ago that it's like, Oh wow. What a new discovery in myself, Mm -hmm. you know, just letting the 
excitement of that kind of be a part of it. I mean, speaking of drugs, dude, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I just come back to this story. Do you guys see the Amy Winehouse documentary? Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm. So good. And and this is not the same thing, obviously, but Mm -hmm. I think sometimes achievement and work can be an addiction. And yes, like. I remember, like, one of the most jarring moments of that documentary was when she wins her, like, three Grammys or whatever it is, album Mm -hmm. of the year, artist Mm -hmm. of the year, and she's just like, I want to get high. (laughs) She's like, what, I don't even, I can't feel anything, I just want to get, and no, they're not the same thing, she wasn't like, you know, she wasn't like, "Uh, I want to get five more Grammys, but she might as well have said, like, Mm -hmm. oh, that's not enough Grammys for me, you know, I gotta get a, you know, but just, like, the need to be somewhere else Mm -hmm. when you're right there is like, ooh. I don't want to wake up 50 years old and be like, oh, yeah, oh, I'm mad God. at fucking everything. It's like, they got no. a bigger boat than me. But yeah. I will say, in Amy Winehouse's case specifically, I also don't know if she ever gave a shit about getting a Grammy. <laughs> totally. I don't she know if she personally. I think yeah. she was this case of like, she just had this like once in a generation voice, but yeah. like was, I think that was like her albatross to bear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am like Amy Winehouse. What I'm saying is my talent. <laughs> <laughs> can't be. My talent just supersedes everything, and it just has to. Yeah. So many of it, but it's gonna like devastate me. But also like, talking about someone who never had good. good advice, like fucking. Oh, oh my god. No one had her back. God, watching that documentary is so hard because there's there's just no one there like, for her. Toxic she just has relationship nobody. after toxic. Yeah, relationship. and her or dad just the same and just like relationship. Um, great cool. eyeliner though. Really good eyeliner. <laughs> Very good tat eye. Yeah. If Very only impressive. that were tattooed. You could get the, <laughs> the Amy. Yeah, exactly. Man, I, I I think about that a lot with like the the Whitney documentary. Have you, you guys seen that one? No. Where like I need it's to it's man, it's it's intense. Um, but like uh, there's a part in it and uh, where they talk about how Whitney and and Michael Jackson were like they would just sit in a hotel room together in silence because at the time they were the only two people that understood what it was like to be that person in the world Jesus. and you know regardless of everything with michael jackson obviously but like just that level of fame is so isolating in a way that it's like it, it i mean it does seem miserable like god how many like actual happy people are there at that level yeah every day we should thank god we're not that famous I mean, a little that. bit, a little bit, yeah, a little bit, right? <laughs> I'm t- agree. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to make a TV show. I don't need to be famous, but just someone let me write a fucking TV no, show. No, that's, that's exactly all I want. that's very no, and it's <laughs> yeah. good to have goals, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and a totally a low key part of me every time I see someone say gratitude or like be happy mm-hmm. or be be mm-hmm. content, I'm like, no. Mm-hmm. No, I feel like memes, like gratitude memes, it does that, has it worked on anyone ever? I've never literally <laughs> seen like a self-care meme and then been like, I'm going to do this right like, now. Like has a I've pillow ever changed your life? life? Did you like no. walk into a guest room and saw a pillow and were like, yeah. I was, I was yeah. texting, mm-hmm. I was texting my friend the other day and I was, we were just kind of checking in on each other mm-hmm. and he was like, how are you? And I was like, you know, I'm okay. But like, I saw this phrase the other day. It said, live, laugh, love. <laughs> And I just, I've just been really took that in. Everything in perspective. <laughs> and I did. Yeah. And I just, like, did it. And it worked. <laughs> I just bought a $40 sign that says live, laugh, love, so I can't donate to Black Lives Matter. So that's... Um, it's a good but, yard sign. But, like, I feel good because I look at that every day and it, like... And it definitely... It's, like, also, yeah, like, you're, if you look at that every day, it's not going to change shit. You're just going to be used to it. And you're going to be like, whatever. Yeah. You're going like, to be sentient, <laughs> serious, and hateful. It's a very good... <laughs> <sentient>. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a good social experiment though. If you surround mm-hmm. yourself with that BS, do you mm-hmm. start to believe it? Oh. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> Let me get to Etsy. We'll hit the garage sales. Oh yeah. I will say I think the most egregious example of this, do you guys drink yogi tea? Mm-mm. No, but I know they have little sayings. Their on them sayings right? are so they're such horseshit and not even in a like oh that's trite way like even if you were they make zero sense like yeah yeah, yeah. and every <laughs> single one is different so i don't know who their copywriter is but they're busy and they fucking suck like every tea bag will be like your heart is the openness it's like stuff that doesn't even like logically makes it like i don't even know what they're going for yeah i have yogi tea and it's like yeah the flower of your life is in bloom yeah <laughs> It's a stink weed, bitch. Get out of here. 
I, me, uh, yeah. me and my boyfriend were making like some care package things for houseless people around us, and we were putting Doritos in, and do, they have sayings on them. Doritos, like, fucking uplifting on the chip? saying on Doritos oh, God. on the bag. Okay, we're past. Once you open a bag of Doritos, you're past uplifting. <laughs> and I was like, this no. feels very like condescending of me to give you this thing that's like stand up for someone. That's literally what one of the Doritos bags. Oh <laughs> come on, Doritos! Like your Doritos, we get it. Yeah. That's I so just, funny. Your nacho cheese. <laughs> That is so fucking funny. Like Doritos getting into the holistic market. I'm excited for like the (laughs) Gwyneth Paltrow Doritos crossover. It's going to be great. These Doritos smell like my pussy. Goop Ritos? Yeah, Goop Goop Ritos. Yeah, Goop Ritos. They smell like Gwyneth's pussy. It's going to be great. Oh, God. (laughs) That, I mean, it's just kicking people while they're they're down. It was, reminds me of those, uh, what, the, the Big Mac meal? No, the, Mm -hmm. um. The Burger King meals that were like oh, yeah. colored based on your mood. They have like blue burgers or buns or something. What? And it was I like, you're sad. This. You're happy. It's like, yeah. I mean, it wasn't even like an inside out Disney movie coordination or anything. Um, I mean, I mean, to be it was fair, just like we know you're emotionally eating Burger King. Yes, Let's lean into you it. Are, <laughs> yeah. Yes, you're stress eating right now. Yeah, I'm trying to feel an emotion. <laughs> yeah, something exactly. I know because I feel this. like <laughs> if every burger was like the color purple was for stress eating, every single one coming out would just be like purple, yeah. purple. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Purple, exactly. <laughs> Um, so I'm glad funny. you're good at giving advice because we're gonna do that after this break. We'll be back in a second, everybody. Hear me. Welcome back to Lady to Lady. I'm Brandy. I'm Babs. I'm Tess. And we're here with Francesca. Hey. And uh, we need your lady problems. So why don't you send them to us, lady to lady comedy at gmail.com. We love to hear from all of our listeners. Ladies, I'm a new listener to the podcast, and I've been binge listening to the max. I love what you all do. I'm in major need of some advice in regards to my relationship with my girlfriend. This might be a long one, so bear with me. Some backstory. My lady and I have been together for almost six years. We live two hours away, and she makes the trip to see me every weekend. I have two kids and live with my aunt. She helps me with my kids while I work during the week. Also, my girlfriend still lives at home and isn't out with, out with her family. She's constantly afraid of them finding out and kicking her out. My family is totally accepting. The gay is a strong force in my family. Lots of cousins. They love her more than me most of the time, and I love it. My issue, since we've been together so long, I've been wanting to U-Haul it since day one of being with her. In our years together, we've talked about moving and things quite a bit, but it mostly involves me moving to where she is because it's closer to everything and she doesn't like the area I live in. The closest mall is an hour away, and she hates that. This has caused tension and fights in our relationship. I'm conflicted. I want to stay here because my family helps me with my kids. Dad is not in the picture. But I want to move there because I love it where she lives, but it freaks me out. I have no one there to rely on help to babysit, etc. Also figuring out a job that would cover bills. Recently, she's been wanting to try to get, to get into real estate so she can move out and buy a duplex home and rent part of and live in the other half, then eventually buy a home and also have more rental properties. But I don't know how to tell her that I'm having second thoughts. I don't feel like that's the right move for me and the kids. I love her more than anything, but I'm responsible for two little ones, and it worries me what will happen if I do this or that. What should I do? If she goes with this whole plan, this will probably mean another year maybe, or maybe two of her driving here, and I don't know if I can handle it. It's even gotten in the way of my decision on whether I should just buy a house here or wait and see where the wind takes us. Any advice you can give a girl on this is much appreciated. So Ooh. they they live two hours away from each mm-hmm. other, and it sounds like she the the girlfriend lives, like, closer to like a major like like m- metropolitan area or something like that right so she's like more out this a writer is like, more like. out in the boonies kind of yeah i mean i wonder if you guys could split the difference and like i feel like drive like, driving your kids like an an hour i mean i don't know like yeah an- but i don't but i feel like then it's like you're really both of you moving to a new place seems like a lot yeah too you know i feel like 
if the girlfriend wants to help with child care, because I mean, I, I think that she's got a very valid point that now she has the aunt that's like helping with the kids. So like, you know, if, if, yeah. if your girlfriend's going to help with that, then maybe that solves that. Yeah, I mean, it's. I feel like this is January, right? You guys got this letter. I think right? a lot That's has probably <laughs> changed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's July. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone wants to move to the boondocks. Boondocks? <laughs> the, um, like, yeah, yeah. The, the, the malls are all closed. You shouldn't right. be in a mall. Mm-hmm. Everyone's yeah. growing their own food, <laughs> obvs. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. this is a bit of an older one because we didn't have any recent ones and we realized we hadn't done this one before. So yeah. it, it, th- that is very true. We don't know what's going on now. I mean, they might have moved in together because of quarantine and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. obviously things could be very different than when they wrote this. Um, yeah. So that's uh, with that caveat, I guess we have to answer it. You know, yes. as though it's happening now. Long yes. distance, super hard. I mean, this is the question is like, sounds like the girlfriend's doing a lot in terms of coming every weekend. Mm-hmm. I'm, it's a hard one. Oh, well, it's hard, especially because she's not out to her family. I mean, that's like something she obviously, you know, needs to figure out if you guys are going to move in together. Yeah. Uh, I guess you could try the roommate thing, but that's, I don't know how long that's going to last. Right, because she, her girlfriend can't even move. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a whole out. other layer. So that seems like the first kind of thing to, mm-hmm. you know, tackle or figure out with her. Well, yeah, but that also, if you are moving to her, then that is putting you in a closet. Interesting. To, mm-hmm. to her family, you totally. know? Yeah. Right. That's why I think, yeah, this that kind of needs to be the first step because mm-hmm. you need to see how they're going to react. Because then if you're going to move, you need to know what, you know. Yeah, you should be in a supportive place, to. especially with your kids. Yeah. You don't want to yeah. have, like, secrets and have the whole family have to do that. I'm going to go yeah. with moving out into the sticks. I'm going to yeah. go with she's mm-hmm. coming to you. Find a nice property there. You can still get into real estate over there. Absolutely. Um, save, you know, whether it's moving in with the aunt, which is a lot, or moving, you know, I don't know, setting up a tent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like also real estate. We're like, well, is she getting yeah. into real estate still? <laughs> There's right. a lot of well, things yeah. up in the air now, probably. Well, I'm assuming a much better economy than the one we're currently in. <laughs> yeah, totally. Exactly. Well, and real estate is also just commission based, too. So you don't get these like you don't have like a steady salary. So like, it's not really something you can like rely on, especially when you have like kids and stuff like there's like certain amount, you know, there's a it's so certain, interesting. Yeah. It feels like real estate become like is a lot of things that people are like I think I'll go into this mm-hmm. and I'm like that seems very hard to just pick yeah up what's the appeal there is it like oh I like houses yeah. I mean I think it's like a your own business so, like you get to be your own boss type you, of thing you make your own hours you get like a big reward if you sell a if you sell a place yeah. you get a, a big chunk of it um I mean it yeah it's not I mean I don't saying it's easy but I think that it is a a little bit of a Mm-hmm. racket market and yeah. you if you get into it and play it you can make money like you yeah. can make pretty good money that makes sense yeah you can you can educate mm-hmm. yourself fairly quickly about it and everything yes yeah well and i think it's like you you always hear out here like a like a lot of like why like the wives that don't have like full time jobs like they become they work in real estate and then they just you know have a couple of houses they're like oh yeah i'm trying to sell this house like they but it isn't like to make it a full time job is like a very different thing that I think what, what like, a do lot you of think people getting into it are. Exactly. It's like Carmela Soprano. Exactly. Like yeah. it's basically <laughs> like being a yoga teacher yeah. for people that don't like yoga. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, a little bit more money, less it's, physical activity. We're looking for a downward payment <laughs> instead of a downward dog. <laughs> <laughs> One's a lot more taxing. Uh, but that said, <laughs> I feel like if she is. Yeah. Re- I'm going to counter all that and say if she is really into it, there do seem to be some people that make really good money at it. I think it's probably like anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying she shouldn't do it. I was just reflecting on how it, like, you know, it's a thing I've heard many people be like, oh, I'm going to, like, yeah. do this as a backup or their second career or something. Yeah. My, my, my feeling is that it's, like, it's it's a... It, it, it's, it seems like it's a very fun, like, a, a thing that a lot of people try to get into, but to make real money at it becomes, like, a very difficult thing, you yeah. know? Yeah, like Consistently. comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a comedy. It's a comedy with houses. You know, you start out going to oh, open houses and you work your way up to booked houses. Um. <laughs> Can you imagine? I mean, my God. You know, yeah. Well, I run a mic out of this property. 
<laughs> and it's pretty successful. You'd have a lot of squatters just like waiting to get on the list. <laughs> they help pay the water sometimes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is just so, I think, I think, first of all, you need to have, like, a come to Jesus with her about, like, coming out to the family and just, like, you know, yeah. hopefully be, hopefully she can do that and, like, mm-hmm. you guys can move forward from there. Um, yeah. Well, it's also, like, your your kids have relationships with everybody in your family, too, and, you know, it's it's important for them to be able to maintain that. So, you know, that's living, true. living around them and, like, that's that's part of their support network in a big way. Just blame the kids too. You need yeah. an out. Blame the kids. Yeah. Good trump card. Sorry, mm-hmm. I don't. I know I said I gave good advice. I think that's but great just, advice. You know. <laughs> I think it is good advice. Yeah. I mean, they're it's, there to be a scapegoat. It's one of the perks of having a kid. You know, it's also one of the perks. Whenever you have a dog, it's a good way to get out of a party. We're like, I gotta go walk the dog. So sorry. See you later. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Kids are. I saw. I yeah. saw the other day on a walk, and, and you know, I haven't seen oh, like God. a kid on a leash in quite a while. <laughs> oh, and wow. I saw. A kid on a leash just, like, fully outstretched, trying to, like, get away. And the dad just saying, not that way. We're not going over there. Not that way. And he just was letting her strain, letting her strain against the leash. I get it, man. I get it. I'm surprised you don't see, like, first grade teachers, like, like, like a dog walker. You know, they have, like, those multi-dog leashes. Just put them all on a leash. Like a bunch oh, of they them? Do. They do. They do have those. Yeah. In yep. in cities, they're like long, and there's like little a rope with a bunch of other ropes coming off. I don't think they're actually strapped, but the kids have to hold on right. to that right. like main rope. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, they should they should have to sometimes. That's how we keep them safe. There should be kid walkers though, like you're I mean, saying. this yes. like wag, but if for they're your expecting, child. they've been talking about this, but expecting kids to like social. What are we? Gonna, are we gonna put teachers oh, in no. one of those bubbles? It's like, honestly uh, to do uh, social idiotic. distancing or like what's. Like, no. No. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. No, it it, no. it 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 can't happen. It's. Uh, I remember there was some some article that came out this week. It's like turns out, gr- uh, grade school kids transmit the virus at the same rate, if not higher, than no adults, and it's like fucking no. shit. No. <laughs> Stop. No. Are you talking about the people yeah. who like lick floors all the time? and eat one another's <laughs> boogers? They transmit yeah. viruses. Get the the child. I mean, the last yeah. time I was like on death's door sick was from the cutest babies ever mm-hmm. like yes yeah. i was gonna snuggle with them there's no way no, i wasn't going to I, probably the reason teachers oh have you raise your hand is because that's at least some time that your hand's not in your butt crack <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> they should just raise the butt and just you know cut out the middleman like all yeah. right <laughs> booty up heads no, up there's up. no <laughs> I mean, like a first yeah. grade teacher's entire job is just getting kids to understand the concept of not talking like that is one of the easiest instructions to take yeah. and you can't get them to do you spend all year trying to get them to get that one thing hands to yourself <laughs> yeah uh no. yeah no yeah. it's, not, it's not, not gonna happen oh the people that projectile vomit randomly there was uh, so much puking <laughs> at elementary school there was so much puking. Well, you know, what was that? Dude, my, my theory is because you ran around at recess and then you came in and they gave you milk. And it's like, mm. so you're, you're running and you're like getting crazy. I think it was a yeah, lot of jostling. jostling. Unhealthy yes. food, excitement, and germs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you come Forgetting back in. Forgetting to breathe. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, so you're puking all over the place constantly. I remember there was a great... You, I don't know if you guys have, like, the great oh, yeah. puke yeah, of, yeah. you know, <laughs> elementary school. Oh, yeah. I, right? I got it. <laughs> yeah. I think we're all it's like that one right puke now. that you don't forget what it looked yeah. like, how it happened. <laughs> it was pink. It was pink, like a bright pink, and I don't know why or how. I, we were in, I had gone to McDonald's with my best friend. We were in Sam's Club. I wasn't in elementary school, but I was that age. Mm-hmm. And we were in Sam's Club, and I remember, like, being like, wow, something feels weird. <laughs> just oh, like, no. <laughs> and then in front of everyone at the store, just <laughs> What about the, but see, so for me, it's like the, I, it didn't happen to me. Like, I didn't yeah. puke. I remember the pukes, but the best puke I ever saw Mm-hmm. was <laughs> Valentine's Day, you know, this kid ate way too many candied hearts. Yes. <laughs> and those things are puke city. And just 
came, walked into the classroom and puked all over the floor and just like little like balls of candy hearts surrounded by bile. Like beep boop, the green, just like, the blue. I miss you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Be mine. <bull. laughs> That was the best puke no, I ever knew. Oh. You about I knew exactly. I was like, yeah, I wasn't even kind of thinking about myself. I was like, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm. Th- <laughs> no, no, yeah, no. The oh, greatest, I was like, puke. I was like, yeah, no, like the, no, the greatest no, the, puke of the school. Yeah. The one yeah. that I saw. <laughs> the one yeah. you saw. Yeah. The one, the one I'm thinking of was <laughs> yeah, in uh, sixth grade, and it was like. Remember those classrooms? I don't know if all schools had these, but where it was like a double classroom and the door opened and you could like turn it into a giant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the little so, accordion door. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like a bus. So we were doing some activity yeah. where we, both classrooms were open. So it was like 60 kids. Some kind of bro- group project or something. Same thing I'm just talking about. No one's shutting up. Crazy loud. 66 graders. Just like complete chaos. And then I remember this child standing up and like it got real tense and then just walking over to the sink in the front of the classroom and hurling just oh, the boy. gnarliest puke and just the deafening silence under that vomit like it went from being like absolute <laughs> melee to just you could hear every morsel coming out of his esophagus oh <laughs> everyone gets so excited you're always like ooh, it's yeah, a ooh there, there it is because you know that it's just going to be chaos yeah. for a minute. And the kids yeah. are just like, oh, we got it. Yeah, it's also it's the beautiful. worst thing you could witness as a kid. You know what I mean? At that yeah. age. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. Well, the good thing for that kid is that all, you all remember it. And he'll be remembered as that kid forever. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, Bobby blow chunks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this kid Raymond was the one that did ours. It was just he went up to go do the pencil sharpener. And then oh, he just yeah. puked puked against the wall and then it just slowly <laughs> ran down next to the pencil sharpener. <laughs> yeah. Like hot pink chunks of something. Oh I don't God. know what. I don't know what he ate. We were all like, ooh, did you eat hot pink highlighters? <laughs> and then he was like, oh no, everybody Hello. doesn't love Raymond. Okay. <laughs> that kid was very yeah, I will say this is not a puke story, but it did kind of happen to me. Um, in one of our elementary mm-hmm. grades, my friend had a pet turkey. And she brought it in for show and tell, like, around Thanksgiving. And this turkey was standing on my desk. Like, so I'm sitting here. Like, I think she sat next to me or something. So the turkey's standing on my desk, and she's, like, explaining to it. And then in the middle of this presentation, this turkey just spewed the biggest. It was, like, (laughs) puke coming out of the turkey's butt. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think I could. I just smelled that for some reason. (laughs) Was it just smelly spaghetti? <laughs> Why it smelled that like so, dust. That's so funny. <laughs> just, my whole desk was covered in turkey shit. Yeah, you don't bring a farm Gross. animal into the classroom. Oh, man. Do turkeys puke straight gravy? Because that'd be tight. <laughs> that just would like, be. Eat me, God. That's where it comes man, from. Man, I was walking <laughs> by a bun- I was walking by a bunny the other day, and Totes. I started saying saying hi to it and it just starts shitting immediately <laughs> what is that response where did you see a bunny where were you it was like it's like this elementary school has a has a little garden and a few chickens and bunnies oh, and stuff thank you. oh gotcha um, that's cute i was walking was by a bunny yeah. you know yeah just walking by a bunny just walking by a bunny Okay, let's let's do we wrap it up? Do you think we gave good so advice? that was good advice? Please yeah. answer right. This has been let us know what's going on now. Follow if, up. Yeah, tell us what's going on. But it, yeah, it does say at the end of this, if she goes with this plan, this will probably mean another year or two of her driving. I don't know if I can handle it. Obviously I know a year is a long time, but Yeah. You know. It's like I mean it, right now it's already halfway through the yeah. year. So. Yeah, we're all in hell. I mean, honestly, yeah. how much yeah, what yeah. is time? Time doesn't matter anymore. Just get through it, and hopefully then you can come to a resolution then when she's ready. Yeah, exactly. But good luck. Let us know where you're at with it now. I agree, though. Yeah, I think the girlfriend should, should uh, come to her and the kids. I think, I also, think the kids yeah. trump everything. Yeah, I think they do. And also, like, she's going to be so much happier if she's living in a place that she can be out and open. You know? I mean, yes. you moving and there really... And care. Two yeah. amazing things working for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think exactly. it's a... Uh, there's a lot to be said for that, for sure. Yeah, exactly. I'm curious to know what her parents think is going on, where, like, she's just, every weekend, she's just going to go stay with her friend that lives two hours away. Hey, denial is, is a, a big, yeah. beautiful thing. Oh, and yeah. People do a lot to keep themselves in it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, figure it out. 
Um, but yeah, send us lady problems, lady to lady comedy at gmail dot com, mm-hmm. and uh, hey, also, that's our show. Also, if you have any stories that you get and puked or peed on by an animal, we'd love to hear them. Or like your best elementary school puke story. I don't. We don't. We'd love to read those too. Let us sure. know what's going Let's on. Let's do it. Mailbag. Yeah. Do um, you remember the name? Puke bag. I, I definitely. It was Kyle. You got Raymond. Mm-hmm. Test. You remember I the name? I do, but I'm not gonna say because he's a comedy fan. He might. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, he knows who he is. I don't think yeah, he's, he knows you know what you is. <laughs> Do you remember the turkey's name? <laughs> Buster. <laughs> yeah, he bust he bustered all right. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Good God. Um oh God. Francesca, tell everybody where they can find you and find all of your stuff. Yeah. Uh, stuff. at Franny Fio on everything. F R A N I F I O on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. You can listen to the Bituation Room podcast wherever you get your podcasts or like watch the uh, YouTubes. Watch Hell on yeah. YouTubes. Hell yeah. I love that name. That's a great podcast name. Thanks. Yeah. Th- thanks for having me, guys. This is amazing. Oh, yeah. Thanks for doing it. Hell yeah. All right, we're going to head over to Patreon uh, for our, our little top secret session with uh, Francesca. So head us up at patreon.com slash lady to lady if you want to hear more. We'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. 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 Can't get enough of us? Subscribe to our Patreon for exclusive bonus content, access to our first 100 episodes, and more. Go to patreon.com slash lady to lady now to sign up. As little as a dollar a month keeps a roof over the glam cave and keeps you laughing, even when your coworkers stare. That's patreon.com slash lady to lady. And don't forget to follow us on social media. We're on Twitter and Instagram at lady to lady comedy. Join our Facebook group, Lady to Lady Podcast, to chat with other fans about episodes or even post your own lady problems. Check out our website, ladytoladycomedy.com, for show notes, videos, and merch. And duh, follow our individual accounts, Babs Gray, Brandazzle, and Testify Barker for jokes and info and where you can see us perform live. And if you want to send us snacks, stickers, or a lock of your own hair, I don't know, whatever, our P.O. Box is 412-794-Los Angeles, California, 90041. And please, leave us a review on iTunes, but only if you like us. We love you. We love you. Bye. 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 Bye.